Hello and welcome to Sydney Airport and later this afternoon I'm going to be flying to Auckland with Qantas in business class. Now they have three different aircraft types that fly across the Tasman Sea uh, to New Zealand uh, and today's is going to be in the 737 which is their smallest and probably has their weakest business class product. But uh, from what I hear the other service is often very good on the Trans-Tasman route so um, let's go and see how it goes. These Trans-Tasman 737 flights are flown by JitConnect who are New Zealand based but owned by Qantas. Look, I think they're for much just a tax dodge. As anyone who has visited New Zealand would know, they're totally rubbish at cricket and uh, rugby, but they are an incredibly hospitable people, and that, as well as the stunningly beautiful South Island, are the reasons why I regularly visit. Now, the check in process happens in a fairly dark and drab Sydney Airport departures area. Qantas have more recently opened up these self check in machines, which work really well, and as you can see, I didn't have to wait at all. After attaching the bag tag, you simply drop it at the automated bag drop and then you're free to get past customs. Now I know some people do prefer the human contact, so there's also the old school check-in areas, although as you can see in this footage, the line was pretty long even for business class. On the right now is the first class check-in area and then you're almost immediately at customs. On the right is the standard lane, while the express path is on the left. Once you clear security and customs, you're free to shop to your heart's content. I picked up some chocolates for the crew and then went up the escalators to the Qantas Lounge precinct. Immediately on the left is the very impressive first class lounge, although the business class is further on around. To be honest, it's one of the older international business lounges for Qantas and it's probably one of the weakest in the network. They keep talking about refurbishing it, although nothing has actually happened. Here's the lunch options, which include a few hot options and a bit of salad. There's this self-serve bar and there's also a barista taking orders. There is this long table along the right, which has some plate of the days, uh, although there's nothing at 5pm when I was there. It was also pretty crowded, so I escaped and did some plane spotting. Now thankfully I also have membership with Priority Pass, so I managed to snag a cup of coffee and some olives for free from one of the bars. I then took off to do some plane spotting and found this Qantas Boeing 747. Interestingly, this actual aircraft was the 747 extended range prototype, which they ended up repainting and selling to Qantas, presumably at demo rates. They're beautiful birds and it's sad to see them retired in the very near future. If you're a fan of them, I hope you've seen my history vlog on my channel and I'll include a link to that below. Now here's our aircraft arriving, a much smaller Boeing 737-800 painted in the new livery which I think looks really great. And if you are into these types of videos and aviation views, please check out my channel where you'll find many more similar videos. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook and regularly upload details about my flights and onboard photos. Eventually it was time to board and start this two and a half hour journey. There are just three rows of business class in a 2-2 layout. These are the standard domestic business class seats. In fact, while the crews were Kiwis, this aircraft was a standard Aussie registered 737 which you may see flying regularly between Sydney and Melbourne. I'll run you through the seat starting with the overhead air vents. Now a lot of newer aircraft don't have these but I always enjoy some cool air running through what's left of my hair. In front is an adjustable touchscreen, and down by your legs are two small power plugs and USB ports. There is this little cocktail table that you share with your seatmate, and the table folds out from the centre armrest. Now there is adequate leg room for under three hours, and of course there's a great view of the wing and engine, including that Boeing 747 I mentioned before. And I forgot to include uh, your in-flight entertainment remote, just near your right leg. They also provide reasonable headphones and the crew came around introducing themselves and offering a drink. It was time to take off and I got one last perv at the Queen of the Skies next door. 
After waiting for another 737 arriving from Melbourne, it was our turn to take off towards the north before spinning around east over the coastline towards Auckland. Once we reached cruising altitude, a round of drinks came around and a packaged snack. I went for the Framingham Savion Blanc from the Marlborough region in the north of the South Island. For a starter, I had this Maggie beer pate with seeded custard cornichons, which I'm sure I pronounced wrong, and grilled baguette. For the main, I went with the Humpty Doo Barramundi with wheat noodles and stir fried gay lamb. And a sneaky top up of the Sav Blanc. As usual, I'll show you the photos of the full menu at the end of the video. Now, while dinner was being served, the sun was setting behind us and put on an amazing light show. Now, I don't know about you, but there aren't many more beautiful views on this earth than watching a sunrise or sunset from the air. It's amazing to think that just 100 years ago, essentially no one ever had experienced these views from so high up in the sky. And now I'm doing it with ease and comfort on a weekend trip to a wedding in Auckland. And finally, dessert arrived, and I don't know, but it seems a little underwhelming for an international business dessert. Look, it tastes nice, as ice cream usually does, but it was just a small tub of ice cream. Now, I've often been caught in these videos watching highbrow entertainment, such as the cartoon Family Guy, so I made sure that this time, you would notice a very subtle hint that I'm watching a BBC documentary on stuff. And on the topic of in-flight entertainment, I must admit that there was far less to watch than on other Qantas International aircraft I've been on. I flew back to Sydney on a 787 Dreamliner two days afterwards and they had far more options. Still, it wasn't terrible and at least they do have in-seat TV screens in case you don't bring your own device. I should also add that there is no Wi-Fi on these flights. While this actual aircraft was Wi-Fi capable domestically, Qantas are yet to offer Wi-Fi on any of the international routes. Now being a night flight, you miss the usual amazing views you tend to get when you cross New Zealand's west coast, although at least I did get some nice views at sunset. So how was the flight? I'll start with the crew, who were great providing prompt service with a smile, and they used the passengers' names throughout the flight, which I think is always a nice touch. The drinks were good and regularly topped up, although the food was probably only okay. It did taste nice, although the presentation was probably not amazing, and as I said, dessert seemed a little plain being just such a small tub of ice cream. The seat itself was okay for what is a two and a half hour flight, although it's still not as comfortable and private as the proper international grade business seats you get uh, with Qantas in the other A330 and 787s that fly on this route. In fact, I've flown across the Tasman Sea in both of those options, and I'll include links to those videos in the video descriptions below. As I said before, the larger aircraft also seem to have more entertainment options. But one advantage of the smaller 737 is that boarding is always a faster process, since there's literally less people to get on, and you won't have to compete with as many uh, when you pick up your bags and pass customs at your arrival. They also run more regular flights with only a single daily, bigger 787 or A330 between the major airports. Overall, the two bigger aircraft do offer a superior business product, although the 737 certainly isn't a bad place to sit for three hours. And if you are considering flying this route, I'd certainly suggest you check out my other videos and compare them for yourself. And finally, there is no amenity kit offered on this route, although I had a spare from another flight, and I'm happy to give that away to a subscriber. Simply comment below including the text, QF amenity kit in brackets, and in one month, I'll randomly select a winner. Now make sure you've given the video a thumbs up, you've subscribed, and you follow me on Instagram and Facebook, because I'll also announce the winners there, as a few of the other Amanda kits I've tried to give away have gone unclaimed when the winners never got back to me with their post address. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this short hop across the Tasman Sea to Auckland, and I hope you check out my channel for many more similar videos, including my flight back two days later to Sydney on a quarter 787. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you another time.